Rhea Ripley gets a new shiny toy because that's all these are now. They're not prestigious championships. Half of those titles in that company, bare minimum, are nothing more than toys. You could go down aisle five of your local Target, pick up one of those little title belts, and it'll probably be more prestigious than what we have on the actual shows. Just go around that Target and start rolling up employees, pinning them, you'll probably have something way more valid. But Rhea, just like Asuka did on Friday night, Rhea gets her new shiny toy. We'll also talk about Cody Rhodes versus The Miz. How does that not excite you for Monday Night Raw? Nothing says real competition against the NBA playoff finals. An elimination game. Nothing says competition like Cody Rhodes versus Miz. Finn Balor. Finn Balor was the latest victim in a Disney sing-along for Sethington Rollins. When Balor has a microphone and can talk over them, Balor completely chokes up and doesn't say a word. Sethington has to yell at Finn to tell him to spit it out. We'll cover it all. Zoe Stark and Becky Lynch are yelling at each other. They want to get to each other so bad. They're right there, but Becky's going to yell from inside the ring and Zoe's going to yell from on top of a ladder because that's realistic. That's how you would fight out there right? that's believable we'll we'll talk about it uh, bronson reed rico shit shinsuke continue whatever they're doing gunther could not be booked any more ridiculously under paul levesque pinocchio puts face schnoz mcgee than he is right now gunther your ic champion loses another match last night looking absolutely average af Guy's in there taking way more bumps than he should be, losing in nonsensical tag matches. I don't know what Paul Levesque is doing with Gunther, but this ain't it. We're going to talk all about it and so much more. This is the Amped Up Podcast with BC Amplify for Tuesday, June the 13th, 2023. The focus of this Amped Up Podcast will be Monday Night Raw for June 12th, 2023. There's no more time to waste. I'm going to down some more of my double shot Duncan. Extra, extra. We're going to come right on back. You're going to smash that up, first of all. Help out the damn algorithm so we can remain amplified. You're going to come on back, and we are going to talk the most truth in this community about this show from last night. Let's waste no more time. Let's do this. Amplified style. Let's do this the right way. It is time to wake up, get up, and get amplified. All right, unit, before we get this thing rocking, man, it is early too on this Tuesday morning, but no, I'm already amplified. So just because it's early, don't think you're getting a. You know, we're just going to do the review in a nice monotone voice. So uh, Rhea Ripley got in there first, kicks off the show. Cody comes out, sets up a matchup with Dom Dom. You know, no, we're not going to, I'm not putting you to sleep. Wrong channel. You come across a channel called BC Amplified. You can bet your ass we're going to get amplified. I don't care what, what time of the morning it is. I'm already on coffee number three. I've been doing business since 3 a.m. Don't worry about it. We're going to be amplified. And speaking of, before I kick off this review of Monday Night Raw, 61223, I got to give a big salute to every single one of my channel members that was in that chat last night, man. Um, we, last night before Monday Night Raw, we did one of the most amplified live streams, most amplified uploads, period, that we've ever put out on this channel. Um, you guys were just, BC was on his 16th coffee at the time. I don't recommend that. That's not very healthy, but I was on my 16th coffee. So I was beyond amplified. I was packed, jacked and stacked up to the nine. But every time I looked at the gold member channel members only chat, you guys were so fired up having such good discussion that it amped up BC even more. <laughs> so for two hours, no shit, we just went what I call 2.0 status 
If you know, you know. If you don't, I'm not going to get into it. But BC reached 2.0 status many times in that stream. And we covered subjects that just really just make fans furious because it's an easy fix. And the company just does not understand or they just don't listen. And if they just did a little bit more to another sector of fans, the product would be better, right? We didn't lie about Roman Reigns when we said for five years, this guy needs to go heal because he only then is he going to tap into his true potential. Roman is going to benefit from going heal. The company's going to benefit. It ain't just about fans getting what we want. We're trying to say this isn't working. This would be better. And we've been saying that about Charlie for so long. And we just keep playing the same game. And it's no longer fun for over half of the fan base easily now. And I go over exactly why we break down facts and everything. And we've been doing that. And it's sad that we have to repeat the process, rinse and repeat. Every single time Charlie comes back, takes a hiatus, wins a belt, drops it, hiatus, comes back. And it's a vicious cycle. So we talked a lot about that in yesterday's podcast. And even though it, it's my duty, when that red light goes on, it's it, I have to entertain, right? Not have to, but that's if you're going to have the channel... If you're going to be on a platform like this, if you're going to be successful, you you better have the gift to gab and be able to entertain. But more than anything, you have to know what you're talking about. You have to be able to really dissect every single damn thing you're saying. Do your research, do your due diligence, use logic, lose common, use common sense. And I hope people understand that as amplified as we get, as much as I turn the dial up to 10, as 2.0 as I get, 3.0 some people said I reached yesterday. As much as we do that, know that it's not just a shtick or an act or uh, it's not just an amplified character. Everything I'm saying is actually truth. Of course, I'm just amplifying it because I'm live. You're on a channel to be entertained for multiple hours. But everything I'm saying, it's not just a fill up time. It's truth. Everything I said yesterday in every vid or upload or podcast before, for years now, everything I say is utter truth. I just amplify it because it's on the channel. Of course, if I'm in a Starbucks and I start shooting the shit with the barista about professional wrestling somehow, of course I'm not screaming. I'm not power bombing baristas. I'm not throwing people out the Starbucks window. We're not screaming that Charlotte Flair's back and going for our title. Of course not. Nobody takes it that seriously. Relax. You come to a channel. You want the truth. You want to know that you're not the only one thinking certain things. Absolutely. But you also want to be entertained. You come to the right place. BC is amplified 24-7. That's the real me. Trust me. I'm an absolute certified amplified man. But I, I jack it up for your entertainment. But I hope you understand that every word is truth. Every word we spoke about Charlie Flair, it's no shade to Ashley, the woman behind the character. But the character is beyond horrendous. And over half the fan base, easily I can say, is just not connecting with this. And there's no, there's no reason to connect with it. Charlie doesn't know what she is. I'm not going to go over it again. But for everybody that caught that podcast yeah i know we put it out late it was right before raw we were live but a few thousand of you have already caught that into every single channel member salute that was a wild amplified podcast last night and thank you to every single channel member because every time i looked at that chat you guys were rocking and it made bc more amplified and we just we got the two hours that we got. Also, real quick, before I get into this, um, John Gray in the Super Thanks is on. The, so after the podcast went up onto the channel as an upload, John Gray came in with that little thanks button down below. You can smash the thanks, send your favorite content creator a, a tip, I guess. In this case, we call it throwing BC a coffee. It's never needed, but you guys seem to... Love doing it, and I love seeing that thing pop up. They come up in little color patterns, man, and it highlights the common, and it's always cool to... to man, if you guys want to throw a coffee to BC thanking, thanking me for what I do on this channel, it's uh, it's humbling, and it's, uh, it's awesome, man. 
I, I just think that's the highest level of respect. So John Gray, after the podcast, after we already rocked out, John Gray sent the 10 spot man a couple of coffees. And John Gray says, thanks, BC. You were so amplified on this cast that I figured I would send you a couple more coffees. Peace. John Gray, it's never needed, dude. Uh, I'm going to have coffees regardless. But uh, the fact that you go out of your way to show that level of respect, it's the same thing I say about channel membership. There's two things you can do to show the highest level of respect. One is totally free. <laughs> totally free. Smashing the up. That's all you got to do. Helps out the algorithm. I can't thank you enough. And the other thing, man, you join the channel uh, as a member and you join the boardroom committee. You know, that's just that type of that type of respect. But more than that, it's that type of appreciation to the channel, you know, to go ahead and be a channel member. Uh, I can't uh, I can't say enough how, how just truly awesome that is. So I appreciate that, John Gray, and to every single channel member. That, that what we did last night, I love just getting the members together, um, and just rocking out as loud as we can be, as amplified as we can be, as knowledgeable as badass. Man, did we light that community on fire? Let's do it again. What do you say? Monday Night Raw, six twelve, twenty three. We start with Rhea Ripley getting her new shiny toy. So, this is what happened on Friday Night SmackDown. Asuka got her new shiny toy, and then Flair immediately hit the ring, and it is obvious what was happening. Belair only dropped the title because WWE didn't want the blonde bombshell to beat Bianca for the title. Optics, everything doesn't look good. Let's give it to Asuka. She's already been beat a thousand times by Charlie. Charlie always derails any momentum that Asuka gets. It's happened a million times. You guys have told me over the last couple of uploads, you guys have told me specific incidents, and there's like five or six times where Asuka was about to get momentum, has a title, has an undefeated streak, has something going for her, and Charlie comes in and derails it. So we played that game on Friday night. She gets a shiny new toy, and it's just to give it over to Charlie. We understand. Unless, unless, by the way, Bianca Belair comes in, and Bianca Belair, I, I, people are saying turns heel, but you can't have that. Asuka's a heel. Charlie's going to be heel if she isn't already. She's already a heel on social media. She's trying to fight back with fans that think that how she returned yet again is absolute BS. And she's like going back and forth with them, uh, mocking them and trying to fucking argue back. So she's already a heel online. And, and it's only going to take a few weeks before she's booed out of the ring, just like last time. That only took three to four weeks. Three weeks, and by week number four, she was begging people not to boo her. So, Charlie's going to be a heel if she isn't full throttle already. Asuka is. And then what? Bianca's going to be a heel too by attacking or costing Charlie? Are people really going to give a shit that much that Charlie got attacked by Bianca? Bianca would probably get cheered even more. So, I don't know about Bianca turning heel, but maybe Bianca does say enough. I was promised this match. I'm not letting Charlie get this title. And maybe that prevents Charlie from getting it. And here's a crazy idea, crazy concept. Charlie and Belair can have a feud that has nothing to do with the title. And then we get matches we want to see, like EO versus Asuka, done correctly. Isn't it funny how a couple of weeks ago, EO came out to confront Asuka? It was something like that. And I think I was I was live, actually. It was on Friday Night SmackDown. I was live doing a stream. Maybe it was members only. And I, EO comes out, and I was just like, oh, this is happening. The EO Asuka, tell me this is happening. And isn't it ironic that uh, that was not happening? And a week later, or whatever it was, week, two weeks, it's Charlie Flair that comes out. <laughs> I think it was the next one. Charlie Flair comes out. And we're doing Charlie versus Asuka, not EO Asuka. I, you can't make this up, man. Only this company would do that. Anyway, I'm setting this uh, Rio new championship up because if you didn't watch Friday, that's what happened on Friday. Asuka got a shiny new title. We believe it's just ascended over to Charlie. But, so that means that Rhea is now carrying a SmackDown title on Raw, but we're no longer calling them Raw and SmackDown. Well, in that case, in that case, let's just... 
throw it out the window then, this whole brand split shit. It, there is no brand split, right? Paul Levesque doesn't know how to run one brand, let alone two. The reason he was successful in NXT, it was one fucking hour on the network. No pressure at all. He was handed NXT by Dusty Rhodes and so many other masterminds. And who was paying the bill? Vincent Kennedy McMahon was spending every dime on NXT and never made a dime back. Paul Levesque never put a dime into that company. It was, it was inherited by Dusty Rhodes' his mastermind and everybody else that was working there. And he just got to be Papa H. And for a few years, a couple of years, he was doing one-hour shows on the network. And his pay-per-views, he only had to put out like five matches on his takeovers. Simplistic, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, as Asuka would say, right? It reminds me of superstars of wrestling back in the day. One hour, middle of the afternoon. You couldn't go wrong. Every segment seemed to really captivate, even if it was a jobber match. It's hard to really fuck up a one-hour format every week. When the shit really hit the fan and competition really came in, like Tony Khan and AEW, I cover this all the time like a broken record on this channel, but uh, Triple H got his ass whooped. He couldn't go to two hours. He admits he can't do a third hour of Raw. He literally admits that every interview he talks about Raw. I don't know how to do the third hour. That's the real challenge. Bro, you can't even do the second hour. You think you're going to do a whole nother brand, a whole nother show? No way. You think it's just Vince McMahon in the weeds? There's probably a hundred fucking thousand people in the weeds in there. Triple H doesn't get, can't be in the weeds by himself. This guy will tank faster than a fucking ship with an entire AEW roster. And you know AEW's roster is like 700 individuals deep. I told you the coffee was hitting in, man. It was kicking in big time. It was kicking in the first coffee. Number three, we're just jacked up now. BC is rolling. We didn't even get into the fucking show yet, man. Rhea Ripley gets her championship. All right, let's just end the brand split. There's no more SmackDown and Raw talk. Let's stop with the visitors' passes. Let's stop with the wild card rule. Let's stop with the champions being on opposite brands of the title that they carry. Let's just stop it all. You know what they're doing? They're even putting video packages last night of Raw with SmackDown storylines, like the Bloodline, for instance. The bloodline, I mean, we're just taking storylines, putting it on the other show as video packages to recap. There's nothing wrong with that, unless you have a brand split. So, what are we doing? What exactly are we fucking doing? We might as well just, nobody needs to see visitors' passes and people like Shotzi running to the ring to tag up with a Raw superstar when Shotzi is on SmackDown, or AJ Styles going for what was already said to be a Raw title. And Styles of SmackDown guys going for it. We got video packages of SmackDown on Raw. Nothing makes sense, bro. Champions are on opposite brands. Just stop with the brand split. If you can't do it correctly, don't do it, right? If you don't do something correctly, just don't do it. So that's... That's my feelings on this whole brand split shit. So the champions now get different titles. So, to my knowledge, we no longer have brand-splitted titles, right? Even the tag titles will be conjointed. No more brand-splitted titles. Rhea gets her shiny new toy. It's a clone championship. Literally, it's a, if you've seen the... Asuka's championship is basically Roman's new title. And then Rhea's new title is basically Sethington's title, but, but it's white, like Oscars, they, they put a white remember, you know, old school Ultimate Warrior. Or Cody Rhodes brought back the old white intercontinental titles too, but Ultimate Warrior used to have colored straps uh, around the gold. And a lot, a lot of time, Ultimate Warrior had the white. I love how, uh, over time, Cody Rhodes brought back the white uh, before he went off to Japan and started AEW. So these are just the white straps. I always liked that. But these are just clone shit. There's nothing original in them. Nothing at all. And they and they all have one thing in common. There's big W's right in the middle because they want to market the W because they know it's going to the sport teams when they win championships. I guarantee you the Denver Nuggets are going to get these titles. And they're going to have big W's and some of those players are going to post it on their socials and it's going to make headlines and they want you to see the big W. It's a marketing 101 strategy and I can't stand it. Because they don't look like titles. I remember the old NWA championship. That was a championship, man. The one that Ric Flair held most of those 16 fucking times. 
I remember the old Winged Eagle Championship in WWE. You remember that? That's original, man. That flying eagle. Man, the, the, the look, the feel, it was prestigious. Now you're getting something you literally pick up in aisle five of Target. Uh, congrats to Rhea for getting a new title. What do you want me to say? Am I excited about it? Do I think this is fucking, um, do I think this is company altering or career altering it? Altering, I can fucking speak. More coffee, BC. Career altering for Rhea? Of course it's not. It's another silly championship. Now make it prestigious. Make us see past the big stupid W. Now, in the same segment that she gets this new title, Cody is out there. Dom Dom, of course, is out there because that's his mommy. You know, sometimes some people are mommy's boys. What can you say? Dom Dom's out there. Cody's out there. They set up a match. Cody wants a match with Dom Dom. Money in the bank. Rhea Ripley accepts on his behalf. Miz attacks Cody from behind. Dom Dom gets in a sneak shot and we go to commercial. The segment sucked. The whole thing sucked. Rhea immediately, within 90 seconds, gets a new title. If you fucking blitz, I was literally ending the podcast. I get my notes in order. I go, oh, she's already got the title around her waist. I'm like, I just missed two minutes of the show. <laughs> she's already got the title. Cody's already fucking challenging Dom Dom. Uh, so the segment sucked. However, sadly, I can say this. I actually care more about Dum Dum versus Cody than I do anything Brock Lesnar and Cody have done in the last two and a half months. Because again, the Cody Brock Lesnar story still to this day doesn't have a purpose or reasoning. It's like a body without a heart. It's like a car without an engine. A story needs reasoning. A story needs purpose. So I can't fully get behind something that we all should be. On paper, Cody versus Brock sounds amazing. But most of us can't get into it. A summer-long feud. And we can't really get into it. Because it never had a reason. Because they botched at WrestleMania. I, I'm not going to go over this again. Cody obviously should have gotten the championship. It all makes sense. Nothing Roman has done since needs the championship. <laughs> and everything Cody has done needs the title. Uh, it was ass backwards. It was absolutely one of the biggest booking botches I've ever seen at WrestleMania night two, April 2nd. But here we are. And we're here at a place where Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar are in a summer long feud. But it's Dum Dum versus Cody that actually intrigues BC even more. Go figure. After we come back from commercial, Cody is in there with Miz. If that doesn't scream that we're ready to compete with the NBA playoffs, we know the Nuggets are about to win a championship. That's going to be the headlines for Monday night. We are going to compete or we're going to curl up in a ball and cry like little bitches. And what did they do? They curled up in a ball and cried like little bitches. Cody Rhodes and the Miz. Cody defeats Miz, obviously. The back of Cody's dome piece is bloodied and it literally looked and felt like Cody just went through a freaking war. What the? F it's the Miz. <laughs> what are guys? Guys, Cody looked like he was in there in a war. He's bloodied. He's sweating profusely. He barely squeaked out the victory. Guys, it's the fucking Miz. <laughs> Everyone beats the Miz in two minutes. It took Cody Rhodes ten over ten minutes, and he had to work his ass off. Cody had to work harder than the, the the construction worker that's building Epic Universe down in Orlando that works 14, 15 hour days. Cody had to work even harder than that. It seemed. The electrician who's spending nine hours a day up high trying not to get electrocuted so that all of us have power so that BC can send the amplification through the vibes of the interweb machine. Cody Rhodes busted his ass like he went through a war and you stop and you think, well, it's the Miz. How did that, how did that make Cody look? If you want to make Miz look good and have a 10-minute-plus match, that's fine. Maybe not with Cody. 
It wasn't even that good either, by the way. I can see if this was like, if Meltzer's like fucking, you know, whacking off while he's watching. Well, this is like nine stars, right? Every two minutes, a star fucking pops out of his little fucking weasel. I could see that, all right? And it becomes a nine-star match, and everyone's like, whoa, Cody and Miz. Miz found himself against Cody. That's not what happened, bro. This match was fucking subpar at, at best. Lukewarm at average. Not even good at worst. Whichever you choose, it certainly wasn't good. Guy goes to a war. He's bloody. I didn't know what the fuck. Anyway, Cody Cutter crossroads combo ends Mrs. Knight. Moving on, Becky Lynch. Ah, some more coffee first. Becky Lynch is out cutting a promo on being in and winning Money in the Bank July 1st. And she's also calling out Zoe Stark. Now, I felt bad for Becky Lynch here. Because during this promo, the crowd was on their phone playing Candy Crush. Or at the ticket booth trying to get a refund. It was that bad. I can't even say Becky's promo was that bad. The reaction, the response, the situation was not good. They did not care about a word that Rebecca Quinn was saying as Becky Lynch. Um, Zoe Stark hits the top of the ramp, and she completely nailed her promo. I thought Zoe was pretty good. She says, and I quote, You made your name by someone breaking your face. I like how she said that. It's like if you saw, if you guys saw NXT a few weeks ago, and Gigi was in a back and forth with JC in a promo. And the way Gigi said, I'll break your freaking face or something like that. The way she said it, <laughs> Gigi just nailed that. She was like in a groove. I'll break your face. <laughs> Zoe actually said the same thing, almost the same way. You got famous by somebody breaking your face. And then she says, so, so I'll, at, at Money in the Bank, I'll break your face again and make you famous again. So I, I, I like that, man. Um, BC butchered it a little bit because I'm laughing as I'm saying because it was just it was well done. I thought I thought that was Zoe for somebody being so new. Uh, you know, there's people that have been on that roster that still to this day cannot cut a promo. They've been there 5, 10, 15 years. And I still cringe when they cut a promo. For Zoe being this new to the main roster, bro, I, I didn't mind this. She ends it by uh, by telling the audience to shut up because they were trying to what her. And she just so organically is like, shut up. <laughs> oh, man, it was so believable. We're going to get to Finn Balor trying to tell the crowd to shut up a little bit later uh, in that promo with Sethington. And Balor just, nobody's going to shut up to that. Right, Zoe says it, and they were like, "Oh, damn! This woman's got some spunk." So Zoe tried to save that, but it just—you know—the audience, yeah, they're they're really not feeling this. Um, this sets up somehow a Becky Lynch versus Chelsea Green match. That's as exciting as Miz versus Cody, but Becky versus Chelsea Green post match. Oh, well, you guys already know Lynch quickly takes care of Green. That goes without saying. I shouldn't have to even review that. Becky Lynch makes quick work out of Chelsea Green post match. Uh, what happened post match? I totally forgot. Actually, hold on. Where's my post match? Oh, there it is. Post match. Oh yes, yeah. Oh, this is. Uh, oh man, how did I forget? So post match. I don't even need my notes for this. Becky Lynch is screaming from inside the ring at Zoe. Now, these are two females that said to talk such a big game. And now the match is over. Now's your chance. Go, 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 go. go. What are you going to do, huh? What are you going to do? You going to smack her upside the... You're going to start fucking wailing away. You're going to kick her. You're going to fucking... You're going to get a kendo stick and start smashing her. Hit her in that with a steel chair. What are you going to do, huh? What are you going to do, huh? So this is their chance. And what's Becky doing? She's yelling in the ring. Yeah, man. I took care of her. Oh, if I could get out of this ring, I'd go up there right now. And what is Zoe Stark doing? Zoe is up on a ladder at the top of the ramp. There's a fucking ladder there. I guess they're trying to promote money in the bank by having a bunch of ladders already, even though this thing is weeks away. So there's a ladder up there and Zoe is up on the ladder. What are you doing, you, you, you clown? Get down from there. <laughs> what are you climbing the ladder? What are you, what are you, what are you proving? She's yelling at Becky from on top of the ladder. Now, this is WWE's way to go. Let's put the image out there. 
that you're up on the ladder and this could be the scene at Money in the Bank, July 1st, man. You could be climbing a ladder while Becky looks up and says, Damn it, if only I could climb a ladder, I still can't get out of the ring to climb the ladder to meet you, Zoe, up at the top of the ramp. Because that's what they were doing. They were yelling at each other. Uh, could, could you guys imagine two people actually fighting like that? Like they have all these words, they talk this big game, and then they just yell at each other. Could you guys imagine having a falling out with your buddy, right? And, and, and you're talking a big game. Could you imagine having a falling out with your buddy? It's going to come to a little bit of fisticuffs. And you're yelling at your buddy from inside your car. You're, ta- you're, you're yapping away, talking a big game from inside your car. Meanwhile, your buddy is up on the roof talking shit. So you're in your car looking up, yelling at him. He's up on the roof for some reason, right? You, you, you guys got beef, and he decided to climb the fucking roof to tell you how he feels. And you decided to jump in the fucking car. And maybe if you, if you have a ball, one fucking testicle, maybe you roll down the window a little bit so he can hear you a little clearer, right? But you're yelling at each other. He's on the roof, you're inside the fucking car, and you're bickering like a couple of toddlers over a Capri Sun. I wanted cherry. My mom packed watermelon. Come on, Fred. Give me your cherry. You don't even like cherry. It's not my fault your mom's a doofus. They're screaming at each other, and I'm just like, this is not even close to realistic. This is Zoe Stark. I could see if it's fucking uh, Katana Chance, right? Little girl, and she wants to climb a ladder and be like, man, I'm going to wait, man. I'm going to train more, right? Or Candice LeRae, right? This little girl, and she's like, oh, man, get you, man, when it's time. Oh, I'm going to keep training. But this is Zoe Stark. She's up on a ladder talking shit. I, I had to spend a minute on that, guys. I, 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 that visual didn't... It's not believable. This is Becky Lynch. She's supposed to be a badass, and it's Zoe Stark. Her whole character is, I'm a badass. And they're bickering from on top of a ladder and one staying in the ring. You can't get out of the ring? Go up there. You can't get down from the ladder? You afraid of heights? You act, You went up there thinking it was a good idea? You look down and you go, oh, fuck. Somebody send the fucking, uh, somebody send the fire trucks. Somebody get the hook and ladder. I can't get down. You got up. Come down. One can't leave the ring, the other's not getting down, and it's all for the visual. And money in the bank. Becky could be looking up at Zoe on the ladder. Stop, man. That's not realistic in any realm. Um, Tord, if we weren't already in hour two, at that point we were. Money in the bank qualifier is next. And this is a Scooter McGee versus Damian Priest. This was a sub-bar match, nothing special, nothing you would even go back and watch 30 seconds of. Um, but the best part of this match was actually during commercial break. AEW played a collision commercial during Monday Night Raw. Hey, all's fair in love and more, Johnny Bananas of the Challenge once said. It's true. Fuck it. You already know the ratings are going to be hurt really bad. Maybe week one people are just going to see what they're doing, see... What the whole punk situation is on day one, you know, maybe even the second week, not that big of a drop off, maybe, hopefully for them. But after three, four, five, six weeks for sure, you're going to start to see that dip unless they do something so epic that the wrestling world is captivated. You're going to, you know, so you got to pull out any stop. You know that even though Raw's viewership is in the shitter in terms of Raw and WWE where they should be. Uh, at least that's, it's still a big wrestling audience. I wouldn't be shocked if they do the same thing on Friday night. I just don't know if there's some type of deal in place where Fox won't do that. I know for USA, NBC Universal, they don't have a deal like that. So you can pay them and they'll air that company on WWE programming. But I don't know if WWE has a blocker with Fox that Fox has to block that out. It's in the contract. I don't know. Sometimes Vince has done that in the past. But I would do that on Friday Night Smackdown as well, for sure. It's going to be more money. It's network television. It's way more money than a commercial on network television because you're on broadcast now. Broadcast is Fox. 
I don't know. I'm just letting you know. Don't be shocked if you do see it on Friday. But yeah, man, AEW puts out a collision commercial. And I thought, hey, that's something newsworthy. Other than that, we come back from break. Priest defeats Scooter McGee via the Razor's Edge. And they actually called it the Razor's Edge. I like that. I think they've been anyway. But that was like a prevalent, like, a Razor's Edge by Corey Graves. It was good to hear that. Um... And then uh, what, what happens? So Damien goes. It was good to see Damien. I thought they were easily going to give this to Scooter. And I'm like, Damien just put over Bad Bunny. He's lost several more times since. Just give him some man. He can't just lose simplistically to, to, to bro Scooter McGee and his flip flops. So it was good to see actually Priest win this thing. Priest defeats Scooter. Post-match, Gunther and Geyser hit the ring. And they beat down an already defeated McGee. Now, Gunther and Kaiser had a main event match later in the night with KO and Zayn. So, BC fully expected WWE to do the stupid run-in, which would, in effect, nullify the Scooter beatdown. You get what I'm saying? So, Gunther and Kaiser are beating down Scooter McGee, and, 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 and they have a match later with KO and Sammy. So, I thought, oh, here we go. KO and Sammy are going to hit the ring, and Gunther's going to run away with Kaiser. But the beating will already be in place, but they ran away. I thought they were just going to do the redundancy there. No, they actually... They actually let the beat down breathe. And they let the heels look like heels and be dominant. They let Gunther and Kaiser do a beat down, pan in with the shot, and let it breathe. You don't always have to have the faces run in. I wish AEW would learn that lesson. R-E-L-A-X. Let the heels get the heat. So that was actually welcome. I know that's a, a minor detail to you guys, but that's what I look for when I'm dissecting pro wrestling. That's what sets BC apart from others. I, 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 that's not ego. That's not patting myself on the back. That's what sets me apart. These little details are not so minor in the grander scheme of it all. And by the way, Gunther should not be running away. I've actually seen Gunther retreat three times, to my knowledge, under Paul Levesque's thumbs. No, Gunther should not be running away. And wait till you hear what happened in the main event with Gunther, the IC title holder. I don't know what Paul Levesque is doing with this dude. You do something decent there, whether you let it breathe and Gunther looks like he's dominant. By the end of the night, they're flat on their backs looking up at the lights. But basically, Gunther didn't take the pin at the end of the night. Doesn't matter. You look at the column, he took the L. You look at the match, he's taking bumps most of the match. Looking like an absolute average simpleton. We'll get to that in the main event. Moving on, Bronston Reed defeats Ricochet. Via DQ off of a Shinsuke Nakamura interference. Match was absolutely stupid. I didn't care about anything in this. I will say this, if you want some positivity in this. There was a good backstage segment after the match between Rico Shit and Shinsuke. They actually had a pretty decent back and forth. I'd be more inclined to see anything between them together than Bronson versus Shinsuke again or Bronson versus Ricochet. No, no shade over to Bronson, but... That little back and forth, if they can get amplified more like that and get creative, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be too uh too down on seeing something between Ricochet and Shinsuke, man. Just get amplified. That was some of the best English that Shinsuke has done, by the way. I, I follow this dude's career from Japan before WWE and even NXT. And I'm telling you right now, I've heard every promo from this guy. I was so proud of him last night. I mean he that was the most, I think, English he's ever dished out in a promo. And it was the most, it was the most vivid, like understood all of it. There was conviction behind it. It was good. I'm very proud. I don't know what the fuck, who's been coaching him on the English this whole last seven days. But that was a good promo by Shinsuke, not just Rico shit. Hour two ends strategically. And by the way, between this, guys, I, I may have missed a segment. Um, I had to take a business call around that time. It was a very important one um, of great value, if you know what I mean. So it was, it was an important business call. Um, many people were on the call. 
And unfortunately, it lasted roughly 10 minutes bare minimum. So I may have missed a segment. I'm hoping it wasn't that important. If I did in that second hour, I'm sure my right-hand man on the channel, JR9Gaming, uh, will let us all know what I missed. I'm hoping it wasn't that significant. Maybe it was just a couple of fillers backstage. Maybe a quick match with Candice LeRae and Munchkin. I don't know. Maybe AJ Styles is doing something stupid. No offense to AJ. Where, where is he, by the way? No, he's on SmackDown. You wouldn't know that because he was just doing a Raw championship thing with Sethington, so you would easily confuse AJ to be on Raw like BC did. Who the fuck knows? Munchkin's over on SmackDown too, right? Well, maybe they had visitors passes. I hope I didn't miss anything vivid in that second hour. Uh, when I was done with that business call, we go into the end of hour two, which is strategically... It was a strategic segment placed against the NBA Finals halftime. It was halftime in the Finals, and they already started the Balor face-to-face -face with Sethington. Now, they really want to set this match up vividly for Money in the Bank. So, they wanted it at halftime. So, they started like six, seven, eight minutes, something like that, way before the second hour even came to a conclusion, and it went right into the third hour. Balor face-to-face -face with Sethington Rollins. The crowd does that stupid sing-along for what seemed like an eternity, guys. Now it's just a, a funny thing to them where I think every crowd is going to try to do this to outdo the crowd before. BC, it's no harm, no foul. They're just, they bought tickets and they're having fun, basically. Good. That's their prerogative. You know what my prerogative is? I have every right to feel nauseous AF whenever everybody is zombie singing because that's what I call that zombie sing that's not like fun like the soccer thing you know or the Zami Zane bam 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 oh 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 you know or fucking Cody oh it's an amplified oh right even Shinsuke Nakamura I can do right or fucking glorious, and everybody's doing that, right? Those are fun sing-alongs. Chris Jericho. I believe, I believe, I believe it. Judas in my mind. Right? Those are sing-alongs. I, I, I don't get nauseous. It's, it's a genuine feeling. Hey, it's fun. It's cool. Sethington Rollins, there's something about this Disney sing-along that just, it, 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 it literally gets me just nauseous. Everybody just seems like zombies because it's so slow. Yeah. Oh, 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 I, I, what is it? I, I'm just like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> fucking Wizard of Oz. What am I doing? Oh, we, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what the fuck is BC doing? What is the Southington one? Uh, see that? I, I'm naturally trying to forget about it or naturally forgetting about it. Maybe that's a damn good thing. What is, how does the Seth thing go? I don't even I don't even want to recreate it, guys. I don't know. But they're doing the fucking zombie thing and it's so and they're all acting like they're conductors. They're all trying to be Sethington and they're like doing the fucking Disney sing along and BC has to mute the TV. How sad is that? I have to mute it. And last night it just went in eternity. It went so long, and Balor is just never been good on the mic. I feel bad uh, to say that because we all love Finn. One of the best actual pound-for-pound -pound wrestlers in the ring-wise, anyway. But promo-wise, Finn Balor is probably not going to sell you on a match via the microphone. It's just not going to happen. Maybe a couple times you can go back and go, eh, that one wasn't bad, basically. I wanted to pay buy the pay-per-view because of this promo, basically. Maybe a couple times. But in his long-storied career, not many. So the guy was uncomfortable. He didn't know if, if you could hear him over the, the crowd. So he just did not cut the promo. And he kept trying to tell the crowd, calm down, shut up. You know, he tried to be a heel and tell them to stop singing. You like that, don't you? He'd go to Sethington and be like, you like that? You like when they sing, don't you? You like when they sing. Why don't you all shut up? I got something serious to say. It's serious. It's very serious. Yeah, y'all gonna sing along all night? That's fine, because I got a lot to say. Those are like, that's quotes, what he's saying, and he won't get to the fucking promo. And BC the whole time is thinking, you got a microphone, bro. You're amplified. They're not. They'll eventually shut up when you talk over them. Any tried and true really good professional wrestler knows. You can shut them up. Snap of a finger. Blink of an eye. 
drop of a hat, you can shut them up. You got to have that confidence. And it was clear that that Balor just did not have that. They would not shut up, and Balor would just not spit the promo the fuck out. I'm like, dude, just speak over them. You have a microphone. Stop them. Because, I, you know, every time I unmute it, they're still singing and Balor's saying nothing. Finally, this is no joke, man. Eventually, Sethington had to tell him, just spit it out. No lie. Sethington had to say, you, you said, you've said you had a lot to say 27 times. Say it. <laughs> I think that was his way to, like, say, like, actually to, to Balor, like, dude, you got to say it, man. We can't be here all night. I think even Sethington was getting sick and tired of hearing these fucking O's. Zombie apocalypse sing-along. Eventually, after approximately 873 minutes of the Disney sing-along, fuck fest, we actually got a damn good back-and-forth promo between these two. Balor getting a lot off his chest from the SummerSlam bout that they had a few years ago. And Sethington asking, which Finn is going to show up at Money in the Bank? Is it going to be the bitter Finn? Or the Finn that beat him with his arm hanging off of him. That Finn or the one that's been walking around here for the last seven years like a little bitch. <laughs> and Balor walks, or Sethington walks off after calling him a little bitch. The best part here was Sethington's music hits. Balor's no longer on the mic, but you could read his lips. And Balor goes, did you just call me a little bitch? <laughs> Legit LOL from BC, bro. He like, did you just call me a little bitch? <laughs> like, Balor's been like, I've been in this business so long. Fuck all, everybody and anybody. And you just call me a little bitch. That was too funny, man. Now, here's the thing. If you think I'm getting excited about this match, it's not going to happen, man. I'm seeing headlines already, guys. Headlines that are like, one of them was like, Balor, period. Sethington, Period. Money in the bank. In other words, like, enough said, sold. Another one was like, years, a rematch, years in the making. Right? Because of the SummerSlam bout, Balor wins the first ever Universal Championship with basically one arm. But he's injured because he did separate that shoulder and it was Sethington that rose to fame after that. So now this is the big storied rematch. Guys, you're forgetting one little thing. There are people like BC... That don't forget a lot of this shit. We like to. We would love to forget most of this horse shit. We just don't. We use common sense and logic. We remember. They've had many matches since. Guys, just last year, they were facing each other many times for the United States Championship. Does anybody remember that? Maybe you're subconsciously trying to forget about it so you can believe in what WWE is trying to feed you. This is the first rematch. Since their SummerSlam bout many years ago. Guys, they were fighting over the United States title several times just last year. I'll do you one better. How about just a month ago-ish? Maybe less than a month. They just faced each other in the World Championship Tournament. Or was it to get into... What was it? I, I forgot what it was. Sethington was in there with Balor for, to do something with the new world title shit. They were just facing each other last month. They've been in the ring many times. But because it's the UK and it's Ballard, they're going to be like, all right, let's really sell it that this is the rematch since SummerSlam because now there's a world title on the line. Where? I'm not seeing a world title. Are you talking about the target title on the, the runners-up participation trophy that Sethington has around his shoulder or waist? Oh! Oh, is that what Balor truly wants? You get more excited and get your rocks off even more if you get the favorite toy that you wanted in a Happy Meal at McDonald's than winning that toy title. Moving on. Oh, this is ironic for you. Wait till you hear this. This is very ironic because it's Shayna Baszler. Uh, so Shayna Baszler then defeats Raquel Rodriguez in just two minutes via the awe-inspiring, ultra-devastating Farrudia. 
greatest of roll-ups. That's ironic. If you follow the channel for years, you know that usually it's Shayna Baszler that always loses the same way in less than two minutes by a fruit roll-up. An actual fighter, an actual fighter like Shayna Baszler ironically always loses via the fruit roll-up hold me down. They hold Shayna down and this beast of a fighter cannot get her shoulder just a centimeter off the canvas and she loses in less than two minutes via fruit roll-ups. This is ironic because she defeated Raquel who's also supposed to be a big muscle female, right? She's a big woman. She's a badass and she gets rolled up. Now you say, well, BC, Ronda Rousey, uh, had leverage. It was a little bit of cheatery, BC. Okay, it's a roll-up. You're being held down. You can't just get... I could see if you were just in a 27, 37-minute war and you have no energy and somebody's on top and you just couldn't get out. I can get that, right? British Bulldog versus Bret Hart-esque SummerSlam many, many years ago. But this? Come on, man. What are we doing? It was just ironic that they switched it up, man, and they had Shayna win a roll-up on less than two minutes. It's almost like a running joke, and maybe Shayna is, doesn't even know she's the, the fucking... She's the butt of the joke. She's the centerpiece of it. Raquel losing via the fruitiest of roll-ups. And by the way, that wouldn't be it. After an Iron Chic salute video tribute that we saw on Friday night, played that, showed the graphic of the Iron Sheik, much love and respect to the Iron Sheik, his friends, family, and loved ones, everyone that knows him the best, we give you all the strength to the most amplified of measures. Iron Sheik, a true legend. But after Shayna Baszler rolled up Raquel Rodriguez, we had another roll-up match right behind it. Chad Gable defeats Eric of the Viking Raiders via the awe-inspiring Ultra devastating fruitiest of roll ups. Now, I want you to picture that. First of all, by the way, happy that Gable got a W. If you follow this channel religiously, I tell you that Gable loses. Uh, at one point, he was one win out of his last 50 matches, a couple of points. And then he was like two wins out of 50. He just, he's 50 50 booked. To the point where he's like one out of 50. <laughs> he's no longer 50 50. He's like one out of 50. He's fucking, he's, he's 199 booked. Uh, what do you even call? He's so badly booked, guys. And I can't even, I can't, let me get a swig of coffee because I want you to really think about this. Ah, thank you guys, man. I had to, uh, add to down the rest of that for this because I, I really, man, just thinking about this. It's like they they try to correct a wrong with another wrong. Two wrongs don't make a right. For the longest time, we've been saying Chad Gable needs W's, right? Chad Gable needs W's. Why, how is he being booked this criminally? He gets a W. Only WWE, right? This has nothing to do with fickle fans or contradicting or being hypocritical or uh, you say you want one thing, you get it, and then you complain about another. This Only this company can do something like finally give Chad Gable a victory while also making one of the stupidest decisions on planet Earth if you're a wrestling company. You take somebody like Eric and Ivar, who are the fucking war machine. Do you guys remember? Do you know their history? War machine. War raiders. And now they're Vikings. I watched their entrance and I feel so bad for them. They're coming out with big Viking shields. I don't even know. It's so sad. What are they? Vikings in 2023. What are we doing? And I like characters, by the way. I still feel wrestling needs them. But how you go from War Machine to these Vikings, and I, and I know from, from moment one when they were the Viking Expedition or whatever they were, the Viking Adventures, so whatever the fuck their first name was, I knew, I knew it was done. This is Paul Levesque. You ain't telling me this guy is the chief content creative officer. And, and, and since day one that he's had any type of control on WWE, he has he does this with the Viking Raiders? This is obviously... This is Paul Levesque. He's got any fucking... He, this is his show? 
And even if Vince was purposely booking the Viking Raiders like that, wouldn't you hope Paul Levesque is like, what the fuck? No, you cannot do that. I'll give you X, Y, and Z, Vince, but I am not letting you do that to the Viking Raiders. No, they're just losing matches like that, man. Eric gets defeated by the fruit roll-up. A Viking Raider in just a two-minute match gets rolled up. He can't get his shoulder a centimeter off the mat. And that's okay with people. ABC, at least Gable got a victory. That match never should have been. The Viking Raiders come out, and two minutes later, Eric is defeated. I, 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 I... You envision, you, you, like saying it, you think, no way that happened. PC, there must have been like a hotel that dropped, accidentally dropped onto Eric. It dropped on the Viking Raiders. A hotel dropped on it, right? A, a shark came out of nowhere into the arena and maybe took off fucking uh, half of Eric. And maybe that's why he got fruit roll up, right? He had no legs, he had no legs, no legs, no legs, right? I mean, who knows? A shark came in. Something happened where, okay, he got rolled up. That's, yeah. No, I don't care if Otis was sitting on him while the roll up was happening. He's a Viking raid. He's a war machine member. And in two minutes, he's rolled up by little Gable. Come on, man. Gable is too fucking good to be winning matches like that. So it does nothing for Chad Gable. You make Chad Gable lose 49 out of 50 matches and then he wins via roll-up and I'm supposed to look at Gable and go, wow, winner! Come on, man. This did nothing for anybody. You guys know that. Unreal. How this, how Paul Levesque can, can, can just go along with this. Create this. At the bare minimum, go along with it. Main event tag title match. Gunther and Kaiser versus Sammy and KO. Gun this is what we're doing with Gunther. Tag matches. Because Da Vinci is, is fucking out injured. So Gunther's doing tag matches with KO and Sammy. Sammy defeats Kaiser via the Blue Thunder Bomb. Kaiser is literally one... He has one victory since March, Kaiser. Imperium has one victory since March. They've had 17 televised matches... And only one victory. Since March. And we're supposed to take Imperium seriously? Look at Gunther's fucking title reign, man. What does this do for Gunther? It's, it's more negative than positive. Paul Levesque's booking of Gunther is making him criminally average. Ten fucking minutes plus with Ali... On a Saturday afternoon in Saudi Arabia. Ali! Gunther had to squeak out a victory over Ali. Gunther's taking the bumps that he took against Ali. And what are you trying to sell me on? But you see, he made Ali look good, basically. No, he didn't. Ali had to get run away to NXT. He's trying to get an NXT title. Ali lost in less that amount of time. To qualify for money in the bank. He did not. And he lost in less time than the Gunther match. I'm doing my due diligence, man. I got my facts. What are you telling me? This wasn't to make Ali... What? This made Gunther look worse than making Ali look better. Paul Levesque's booking of Gunther is making him criminally average. Best way I can put it. Every time I'm watching Gunther lately, he is in these long matches, taking all these unnecessary bumps. He's looking like another average wrestler right now. He's a taller fucking Drew Gulak right now. You ain't gonna sell me on anything different. This is somebody who's really high on Walter Gunther. Chops McGee. I hear ya. Turned Sammy inside out last night. That's what Gunther can do. I get it. But how he's being booked right now by Paul Levesque, Pinocchio, Pussface, Schnaz, McGee, HHH, Hunter Hurst, Helmsley. He's booking him criminally average. This is not making people go, wow, Gunther's a... He's... 
Gunther's a, he's, he could take on Brock Lesnar. No, if I ever watch Brock Lesnar go over 10 minutes with Ali, or Brock Lesnar take the amount of bumps that he took in that tag match, and still come out a loser. Put dome pieces through brick walls if I see Brock book like that. Gunther drops uh, another match. Gunther takes an L. Your IC champion, folks. That's Paul Levesque for you. Oh, no, no, it's not. Basically, uh, it's Vince McMahon. Oh, Triple H's hands are tied, boys. Oh, he's done anything he can do, basically. Vince McMahon makes the final decisions. Oh, yeah, that, that's the narrative. That's right. Paul Levesque has no control. He has no voice. He's got no balls. He can't stand up to anybody. Paul Levesque is just a victim, making millions of dollars with the title of head creator. But, uh, he's so much in the weeds. You hear the lawnmowers, basically? That's Vince McMahon. He's, he's, he's mowing all the other, uh, the weeds around them. He's mowing everyone out of the weeds. That's Vince right now. He's making sure nobody's in the weeds with him. The fuck you talking about? Logan Paul, uh, that, that's it. Raw goes off the air with KO and Sammy celebrating. Like, like trying, to, trying to combat the real celebration that happened moments later. After Raw went off the air, the Denver Nuggets defeated the Miami Heat to become NBA champions for the year. Champions of the world. The Denver Nuggets defeated the Miami Heat. The Heat go home losers. The celebration was on. And over on Raw, their competition is Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens celebrating a tag team title victory with their ugly tag titles. Hey, if you want to put new titles, how about you give the tag titles a long overdue makeover, Paul Levesque? Because those titles are fucking ugly. They look like crushed pennies and crushed dimes. That's what they honestly look like, man. Cliff, No cliffhanger last night. We just celebrate with KO and... and and Sammy, no cliffhanger whatsoever, and we get word that Logan Paul will return next week, and then we go off the air. Wow! And I'm high on Logan Paul. The guy's been phenomenal since he started wrestling, and even his promos, I don't mind. I don't mind Logan Paul. And he he's done a lot, and he's got injured for this business. He respects it. Uh, but uh, if you think that telling us Logan Paul is coming back next week because it's Cleveland, Homeland... That's not, I don't know who's going to go, well, I have to watch Raw, Logan Paul showing up, and I don't know watching KO and Sammy celebrate a tag victory over Imperium that can't win jack shit anyway, I don't know how that's going to make people go, wow, what a cliffhanger, gotta see Raw next week. My name is BC Amplify, this has been Amped Up with BC for Tuesday, June the 13th, 2023, featuring the Raw review for the 12th of June until next time, and there will be a next time. Thank you for joining. Thank you for tuning in. Whether you watched via the tube machine or just popped in your earbuds and listened to all of this as a straight podcast. However you viewed or listened, I appreciate you guys very much, especially my channel members. Man, we got new channel members that were added last night. You guys brought the fire, the heat, the amplification last night, and I know that's going to continue. So... Um, and we will have a new channel member championship title soon. That was, uh, that was a good idea by Dave Mille in last night's street, uh, stream. And we will have a new championship soon for my channel members. So until next time, guys, um, stay amplified. It's time to get some more coffee down that shit and whoop the day's ass. Amplified style. Top guy. I'm out. BC saying check you.